But right, uh, cool. if he if he changes, I'll let you know. All right, that's cool. All right, so I'm going live right now on the channel. I was trying to do the other stream too, but it was just being kind of difficult because I never used that one before. Gotcha. But yeah, man, the Lakers did not start all too hot, I must say. Bro, I have this like I have this like theory that they're like gonna lose on purpose because they they don't want to play Denver. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, I've been hearing that a lot, honestly. Because yeah, I, I that was like my whole uh, betting strategy. I was like, I'm just gonna put the money on New Orleans because I just feel like LA, and then I also feel like the NBA wants LA and Golden State to play. You know? Gotcha. So yeah, we'll now we'll definitely see. I think, I don't know, even if going back to like the Lakers and this Nuggets thing, like if the Lakers were to just some like for actually throw the game, I don't even know if they're going to legit beat the Warriors or the Kings. I mean, there's a chance that they could still definitely not beat them. The Kings have had their number all year. I yeah. mean, Steph Curry is, you know, I mean, we'll see who wins that, that series. I don't know because whoever ends up winning that, it still might be tough. The West playing is just so much – better than the east playing you know like the east playing yeah. like the nine and ten seeds are just like awful not not awful but just like subpar teams right and then i mean miami and philly are decent teams but yeah philly is like that team that definitely should have had a higher seed but obviously with joel and b missing like half the half the season yeah yeah you know, i'm a they... sixers fan so i actually thought oh, we were gonna yeah. get a six seed and i didn't realize how the tie break worked but I think I think we're we've won eight in a row, so I think we're like we're playing good and we're healthy. We just got to beat Miami, and Miami is always like they you know they turn into a a different team in the playoffs. So we gotta if right. we can get past Miami, because then we would go against New York, who I think we have a way better chance than than against Boston. Against New York, uh, oh yeah, Boston's had Philly's number for years now. At this point, Boston, I think. The guy who is who we do I who I do the podcast with is a Boston fan, and since I've known him, oh, really? I think they've beaten us like five times in the playoffs. Yeah, it's, it's just, been rough, like, and I feel like Philly somehow always gets matched up with with Boston, whether it's like first round or second round. You just bro, haven't, haven't really gotten lucky. Yeah, we haven't been past second round since two thousand one. Yeah, it's just like it's, uh, well, two thousand one. Um, you were still that. in the second round. That was when uh, they lost to Atlanta. Oh, uh, was it 2000 then that they with, the with Allen Iverson? The last time, yeah, I think that was probably the last time he has been Because I know as long as Joel Embiid has been there, he has not been out the second round. As long as he's been there. No, he hasn't. Yeah, it's been yeah. since AI. Oh, yeah, that's a long time. Let's see if the Lakers pick this up a little bit. Are you watching it just on – Gamecast? Yeah, I'm watching it on uh, – I just got it on YouTube TV because I wanted to try and stream it from that other site I was telling you about. But You're a Lakers fan too, right? I remember yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't stream the game yet like that. I think I had to be like some kind of uh, – get approved or something. Yeah, I, so. we don't – I don't even know anything about streaming. We. Oh, my God. Lakers yeah, we used to back. stream a lot, but we didn't do it as much anymore. But I, I definitely want to start doing it again. Does it say how many people are like watching? Yeah, uh, right now it's four. So I appreciate the four of y'all in here right now yeah. checking out the game. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a ton of people, but you know, appreciate anybody coming in here and watching. Who do you got going all the way this year, though? Man, um, I mean. It's like definitely like I feel like it's the it's the e easy pick, but I, I feel like it's either between Denver and Boston. Those are the two best teams. Um, nah, it's definitely. I think it's gonna be Denver Boston, honestly, that we see in the finals. Yeah, but I I say it, I've been saying it about Boston like for the last like three years. I'm like, oh, it's their year, and then they they never do it. So I'm like, yeah, Boston last year that was disappointing. What what happened with with Miami? I just don't see like I don't. I feel like this year they're even. This is the best team they've ever had, and they're yeah. like the disparity between them and anyone else in the East is so large, especially yeah, with Milwaukee and Giannis. And in, even with Giannis healthy, like they won like twelve more games than than uh, the Bucks did. Right. But in the West, 
I feel like if if it's not Denver, I would say Dallas has Dallas could Dallas could they they've looked really good towards yeah. the end of, the end of the season, but the the West is honestly so loaded right now. I, I do oh, think yeah. Denver's coming out, but the West really is just loaded from like even the, some of the play in teams, like you know, people are saying the Lakers can make a run. I don't really think they're going to, but I don't know. I feel like honestly the, the only team that was like definitively coming out the West so far has been Denver. But I don't know, it's hard to go back to back. It really is. So I mean they it also is. lost some pieces in the offseason. You know, Jamal Murray's missed a lot of time. I know he's missed the playoffs, but he's missed a lot of, a good chunk of the season. So, you know, how how is he gonna be looking? Yeah. But, you know, and I, I don't think that they'll just sweep the Lakers this year either. I, I'd be surprised if the Lakers got swept again. Like, if the Lakers end up matching up with them, I think it'll be a, a much tougher series. I mean, because you think about this Lakers team, right? Like, they're pretty much the same team that they were last year. Mm-hmm. But you have a much improved D'Angelo Russell. Right. You have a Definitely. much improved Hachimura. Right. And as long as you guys can stay healthy, I will say, like, your defense, I feel like, was, like, way better last year than it yeah has been this year yeah i can agree to that which is it's gonna hurt against denver <laughs> it's, it's definitely gonna hurt yeah. against denver but you know we'll we'll see i i don't like the odds obviously but yeah you know i i would have rather had matched up with anybody else in the first half I mean, I, uh, uh, first round. yeah i i i saw this posted on instagram it was like lebron made a quote from like 2011 or 21 where he was like the playing game is so stupid. Like I hate the playing game, and like and now the he's last in the four years, game. he's been in the play in like every year. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Not for oh sure. my god, it's like he's he's taking advantage of it. And they they made a run last. I mean, you guys went all the way to the Western Conference Finals last year, which was like, yeah, nobody really will, saw that coming. You know, as far as the play in though, because what the Lakers are the A seed right now, right? Yes. Yeah, because like if there was no play in, they would be in. In that case, they still would make um, it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if right. they got in before. Like, I forget what you were last year. I'm not sure if you guys were. Yeah, I don't even remember what it was. I think we did get in though, as like a nine seed or something. Like, and ended up getting to the playoffs. But I'd have to confirm that. Another yes. team too that could make some noise. I feel like that no one's really talking about is the Clippers. The Clippers, the Clippers. You know they they've been kind of up and down, but a lot of the second half of the season they looked really good. Yeah. But I saw something about Kawhi possibly like having knee swelling and stuff. I don't know how much truth yeah, there was to that, but I saw that today. So I mean, if he's not playing, they're they're done. Yeah, and I mean Minnesota, I think they're legit. I mean Anthony Edwards is, I think he's a superstar in this league, top ten player yeah. in the league. I mean, I, that's how highly I think of him. And Carl right. uh, Anthony Towns is back. They just got a good like complete team, um, and they play defense, which. I feel like a lot of these other teams don't play as good a defense as they do. They could be tough. And then, obviously, like, OKC as the one seed, I think they're getting disrespected a little because they're – They have been. Like, I don't know if you saw Shannon Sharp today, but he was going off about how phony they are, basically, as the one seed. They're not phony, bro. They're they're really good. I mean, there's a reason why they – No, they're definitely a really really good team. Yeah, He was saying that they're the weakest one seed in, like, a long time, basically, like a really long time. No, it's just because they're young and, like – yeah, but they're like, just young. They don't have you know playoff experience yet or anything, but they're they're going to be good for a long time. Yeah, Jalen Williams just the beginning. is one of my favorite. Like, he's obviously not like he's not unknown anymore. Like people know yeah. him, but mm-hmm. he's still a little under the radar. And like watching games this year, whenever Shea didn't play, like he he stepped up every time and would drop like yeah, he had a huge. Every- Huge Bro. season this year for sure. And then obviously the emergence of Chet as a rookie was really big for, for OKC as well. I wasn't sure how he was going to be. You know, I felt like yeah. I didn't know where to put I thought my opinion on him. Yeah, because like I'm like, obviously he's really skinny, but, you know, I think he definitely proved a lot of people wrong. And he was easily the second best rookie this year because Webin Yamba is a freak. But, well, yeah, it's yeah. Like I wish we could have seen him in the playoffs this year. I really do. That yeah, would have been I- fun. It was it was funny too. I saw this other thing on Instagram where they were like, "Yo, the NBA should do like an NIT tournament, like equivalent, like how college <laughs> does, where they just yeah. like." Have... And that would be fun. Like I would watch that. Like it would be like. What if they did something like that for the like number one draft pick? 
Yeah, exactly. I feel like that could be something pretty cool instead of doing the lottery because the lottery has been like, I don't know, there's been some teams that are horrible and never got yeah. it because like in the lottery, oh, that shot was horrible, Gabe Vincent. But I also feel like if they did do that NIL style thing, do you think it would be like series or is it going to be a March Madness style where it's just one and done? Because the worst team is probably still going to lose every time, I feel like, in a series. Yeah, they would probably just do – I don't even know. I mean, they probably won't do it just because, wow, that was nice by Zion. Yeah. It, it, it's just, like, too much to coordinate. But, you know, the yeah, NBA, like, it's, it's, all about, it's all about money. So, I mean, if you told them that they could make more money, they would probably be open to it. <laughs> yeah, they probably definitely would. But it's a cool idea. I don't, I don't know if they're going to implement that ever, but we'll see. Because, I mean, the lottery, the draft lottery has been kind of, I don't really know how I feel about it. What's up with uh? What's up with Brandon Brandon Ingram? Do you know what what's going on with him? Because I thought he was supposed to be back. Uh, no, nah, he was in. He started. Oh, is he uh, playing? I think, yeah, okay. he's playing. He's just on the I bench haven't seen right him now. really since I. Yeah, I'm almost 100 percent sure he was in. Uh, okay. I mean, I I wasn't watching a lot of the first quarter, so yeah. Think... You know, I had it on at the start. What are you? Uh, are you a Zion advocate or are you uh, a Zion? You know, that's funny that you asked because I was just having this conversation with my group chats about Zion. I'm not a hater by any means. Like, I want Zion to succeed. I just feel that he has not been able to sustain that level. I mean, obviously, he's had a ton of injuries yeah. and it's been up and down. I mean, he's balling right now. He's got 15 points balling already. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even for like this year, I still would say I expected more. I mean, I know he's coming back, but I was at least a big step is that he played like 70 games this year. Yeah, so that's a huge a first step. So he yeah. played a lot. I think he he averaged like 23, 5, and 5. Leave on. My dog. But <laughs> yeah, he averaged like 23, 5, and 5. So, I mean, you know, pretty solid numbers yeah. all around. With a lot of mouths to feed on that team too, you know? Yeah, for sure. I just want to definitely – because I we saw the flashes a couple of years ago when he was averaging like 26 on 60%, yeah. you know, getting buckets like pretty easily. And I just want to see that, you know, for a sustained period of time really before I go and jump the gun on anything. I just but, think with him, like, sorry to cut you off. Like he no, – uh, It's really, really, really hard to be a like a superstar in this league when you have no jump shot. Like, he just right. shot one right there. Yeah. And, like, this is coming from, like, a Sixers fan who I got to see Ben Simmons, like, on a first-person basis, right? Like, and I know that he's he's got more of a jump shot than Simmons does. Right. But I feel like he's got to be in the gym every day doing – I mean, like, Giannis came into the league with no jump shot, like – He still don't have one. He still doesn't <laughs> have still one, broke. but, like, people – like, you can't just leave him, like – like, people will guard Zion, they'll just – give him like six feet of space until he gets into the paint and like that just ruins the spacing for everyone but the the fact that he still scores like 23 points a game without a jump shot just like imagine yeah. what you could do with a jump you know what i mean like no 100 percent. jump shots always going to add more points for your game it's always going to open up more ways to score i think though um i just watched basically like what you were saying the lakers just sagged off his eye and he shot like a 15 footer bricked it off the backboard so that's one thing but he still got 15 points, so he's you know, still he good. Finds, yeah, he's a great slasher. You know, he's obviously yeah. very strong around the rim. He just he's makes first, everybody yeah. look like little kids. Like he yeah. still just got that brute force around the basket. Because yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I was having a conversation. Yeah, for sure. I was having a conversation in the group chat because like we were um, talking about the USA team and everything, like in the roster. Did he make it? No, nah, he wasn't on it. Um, yeah. I'm not even sure if his name it was, was kind of a for, weird list for the running. Yeah, I mean, I like the roster a lot, but we started How did talking Drew about. Make it? That's what I was like. Man. I feel like Drew Holiday is one of those pieces that just goes really well like with them. Though you need yeah. some guys like that. Even when you look at the previous USA rosters, you know, you got guys like Iggy, Carlos yeah. Boozer was on there. You Tyson know, like Chandler, Tyson yeah. Chandler, right? So you yeah. you got to have guys that are gonna be willing to do the dirty work, get on glass, box out, play defense, and then let your scorers do what they do best. You know, you score the ball. Team, team USA basketball. Yeah, they actually put Kawhi Leonard in for the last spot Kawhi, today, yeah, so the, the roster looks really good. You know, I didn't even realize that Joel Embiid was, like, an American. Like, I thought he yeah. would – I thought he'd be he, on, like, the Cameroonian team. He had, like, three choices because he has citizenship 
and he just got his citizenship for the USA, and then he has it in France as well. Oh, and then right. obviously he's from Cameroon, so he could have played for either like three different countries. I respect when and they he chose the USA. I, I like. I, I would have rather him played for Cameroon. Yeah, I know a lot of people are feeling that way. A lot of people say he took the easy way out to like, oh, this is gonna be the only ring he gets, or like you know. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, probably, bro. He's already third. Yeah. I mean, he's already almost thirty years old. So I, he is thirty. I'm pretty sure he just turned thirty. And you know, haven't seen the fi- conference finals yet, so it's it's definitely been rough. I mean, he's had a lot of bad breaks, obviously, with all the injuries, and he's injured again going into the playoffs. So that's a major factor all the time. Oof. But Brandon Ingram, that's a tough bucket. I think uh, honestly, this might be as crazy as it is, like to say this might be the most healthy he's been. And I was talking to. Uh, my buddy about this it's like it's it's kind of maybe like a little bit of a blessing in disguise that he that he missed some time because he's coming in fresh with like less right. tread on his tires that's and, true you know like that's a good way to think about it when he when he's out there like he's asked to do so much on a nightly right. basis and like the fact that he's been able to miss some time and like get back to 100 percent quote unquote um if he can stay healthy in the playoffs in I, I'm definitely giving some Sixers bias here, but other than Boston, I think we could beat any team in the East. Like, obviously, New York's been playing well, and obviously, Milwaukee has Dame and Giannis. But like, other than that, I'm not scared of Cleveland. I'm not scared of Orlando. I mean, Miami yeah, I wouldn't be scared of those teams either, honestly. But I, yeah, yeah, when Joel was healthy this year, him and Maxi were, were just great together. Like the Bro, chemistry was, them was awesome. Again. Yeah, yeah, like, he, he was, was definitely running away well. with it early. Yeah, he was running away with it early on. I mean, Irish in 36 a game in like 35 minutes. <laughs> it was literally yeah, getting was, almost two points a minute, like something ridiculous like that. He was so, like, he was having a better year than last year, which like yeah. nobody thought was even possible. Yeah. yeah. He dropped 70 in that game. For sure. He, he was balling, man. And Tyrese, well, speaking of MVPs, though, oh, yeah. I didn't ask you, who is your MVP for this year? Because I mean, it, it seems like it's going to Jokic at this point. Man. That's, it's really hard. Like, I feel like, from an eye test perspective, I'm not answering your question, so I'm, I'm taking the easy way out. But, like, I feel like Luca has had the best year, like, mm-hmm. objectively. Yeah. Because like, Luca's his always his Achilles heel was that he wasn't very efficient, like, field right. goal percentage-wise. I feel like that was always something like that was a little bit off about his game. But he's shooting almost 50%. Yeah, he's, I think on, like, true shooting percentage, I think he's, like – 60 yeah. something true shooting percentage he's, like this he's year been he's been unreal. so efficient this year like and he's taking a high volume of threes and i think he was almost like 40 yes. percent. like yeah yep. he's everything he's went up amazing. but like then you know the mvp is very based off of your team so like yeah obviously okc i feel like <sighs> there's some voter fatigue like people don't want to give it to Jokic again like, I wouldn't be mad if either of them got it. But to be honest, I feel like Jokic is going to win it. I, I do think Jokic is the best yeah. player in the NBA. So I Yeah, like- I, I agree. I think Jokic is the best player in the league. And I think that he's pretty much the favorite, right? I think it was like minus 5,000 odds that he wins the MVP. So I can't it's believe how pretty much it. locked. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's honestly kind of surprising. I think it's going to be like a yeah. runaway vote again for Jokic. and. You know, with how good of a season Luka just had, and then obviously yeah, Shea yeah, yeah. having the number one seed. Now, I know that they had the same exact record as Denver, though. So yeah, that's one thing. Even though they had the first seed, they still both have 53 wins, their teams. So there's that. But I guess that the, you know, the Thunder probably had the tiebreaker over them or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see how the vote's going to come out for Jokic because I, I feel like it's going to be a runaway. But I agree with you. I think that. Luca should have gotten the MVP this year. I mean, as injured as Dallas was all season, right? And you know, we look at the teams and everything, and I know that the placement is extremely important. But like Jokic, two years ago, got it as a six seed. Obviously, like his team was in shambles all year. He didn't have his next two best players. He was playing yeah. with like Campazzo and basically a bunch of scrubs who aren't even in the league anymore. Campazzo and yeah. took him to like fifty wins. You know, had an, the highest PER ever in a season. Incredible. And like now we're seeing similar things from Jokic or from Luca. You know, Kyrie yeah. missed 20 plus games, Exit missed 20 plus games, Kleber missed like almost 40 games, Lively missed a ton of games, like the whole roster. 
and they still and and then Luca on top of that played like over seventy this year, and then yeah. they still got fifty wins. I mean, he's averaging thirty four, like ten and nine point eight, almost like yeah. a thirty four point triple double, on Insane. extreme extremely good efficiency. Had a seventy three point game. You know, the most points we've seen since Kobe. Yeah. And it's just I don't know what else he's got to do. I mean, it's it's not even like it was a Boston size yeah. gap between their wins. It's only seven win difference to me, which is like I mean. That's a good little difference, but comparing the teams of what Luca had, like he has a great team, but also it wasn't until the second half of the year after they made the trades and they acquired new players. And those trades weren't like, like, up. Th- like PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford are like yeah. average NBA players. Like, let's be honest. Like, yeah, and they're they're fitting in very well though. Like they, Luca's maximizing Luca, what they have. Yeah, like hundred percent. I mean, if and you, then, the Denver roster is, all around is way better than the. Dallas roster, but if you're going off roster wise, then like SGA has a case too because yeah, OKC's team they, they have a good starting lineup, but like other than that, their their bench is pretty bad, and he took them to like a team that was barely supposed to make the playoffs this year. He took them to the one seed, so yeah, you could throw his name in there, and his efficiency was probably even crazier than I think he shot right. like fifty six percent from the field this year as yeah, guard. like fifty some percent from the field. Then I think he was like thirty seven from three. So he because he wasn't always a great three point shooter, no. so he obviously improved that a lot as well. And he and he was the Lincoln steals too. Yeah, like one hundred percent defense but, too. It's yeah, crazy. I think that uh, it was they were all deserving. They really yeah. were this season. Every all three of them. Um, but they could all just share. If it. I had a vote, I would have went to Luca. I probably honestly would have went Luca, Jokic, Shea, which yeah. it might seem like kind of a disservice to Shea to say that, but I feel that, yeah, I don't know. Jokic is still to me, Jokic is the best player in the world. And like when you look at all the advanced stats too, like just measure a player's value, he just runs away with it. He leads the league in it every single season. Is that Jokic? Yeah, Jokic, like yeah. his advanced yeah. numbers every year is just like through the roof. And the way that he just impacts the game in so many ways, at least like offensively, like he's to me, he's probably already a top five like offensive player I've seen. And yeah, it's passing. He's so he, smart with the ball. Yeah, he's just crazy with it. Like he's literally an entire offensive hub for them. But yeah, they were all deserving. What do you think about? I know you're a Philly fan, so you probably don't like Boston too much. But like, what do you think about Tatum? I've seen some people saying that he got no love for the MVP this year. But his team is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't think he should win MVP. It's fair to put him, like, fourth or third. Like, I mean, he was the best player on the best team in the league. So, he yeah. showed Well, would you even have him over, like – well, who yeah. was right behind them through? Was it Giannis behind them? Because the Bucks kind of fell off, though, a lot part of the season. But Giannis was still being Giannis, though. Yeah. He Giannis. had some monster numbers, too. Honestly. Brunson, what he did with the Knicks this year was pretty. Yeah, empty. Brunson needed some more love too. Like they had so many injuries this year. Like they, yeah, they were one of the most injury riddled teams in yeah. the league. And uh, I mean, the two seed, for, or yeah, the two seed, pretty impressive. Other than that, um, the one award that I that I can't like put my finger on is, in my opinion, like Wembenyama is the clear defensive player of the year. But like Rudy Gobert is like how to win like, his fourth one. Yeah, and I'm like, I get it. Like from a team standpoint, like Gobert, like the Timberwolves are three seed, and like Wemby and uh, the Spurs are not even you know in the play-in. But like, have, have you seen Wemby's numbers? And like, have you watched like a full like he? It's he'll, he'll, it's he'll crazy what he does, man. Box, like, no, yeah, it's boxes. crazy what he does. You know, I I get that Rudy Gobert is a great rim protector and everything, but. I think that Wemby on a minutes restriction on a horrible team. Plus, you you got to think that he's so Rudy good. Gobert has great perimeter defenders around him too, like Aunt Jaden McDaniels. I mean, Cat yeah. is whatever, but like they have a good defensive team, which is gonna make things easier for him too. Like Wemby's playing with nobody, three point like, six blocks honest, a game, and literally less than thirty minutes a game. And I mean, second place is two point four. And not only that, Wemby can actually come out to the perimeter and still yeah. stay on a point. Rudy Gobert is lost out there. He can't defend anybody out uh, on the perimeter. He's that's literally value is right yeah. around. Yeah, his value is just around the basket, which is like it's extreme value there. It. But I don't understand it. It's the thing with Rudy Gobert is is like every team he goes on, they always have like a top three defense. Like so, he he really is a valuable defensive. He's piece. good. Like he yeah, yeah he's, he's really good. good defending the rim, but. 
kind of like I don't know if you saw what Demarcus Cousins said though, but there's a lot of times where he can't even be in the game because like he's either just so uh, such a liability in certain schemes. Like yeah, yeah, he's he's very limited. And now I know that offense has obviously nothing to do with defense, but even like on the defensive side of the ball, like certain schemes that are on the playoffs, he kind of just gets faded out. And he's not a know, good free throw I, shooter either. No, nah, he's horrible. And yeah. then you know, co- offensively and t- like he is just so he's he honestly is bad offensively, like from what I've seen. Like he's really he's just a, for, he's just a lob threat. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Like for a person like that's a making his Jordan. type of a, yeah, for his type of contract, he's oh, horrible. The dumbest contract. Yeah. I will say it's like crazy. I used to give him a lot of like on the <laughs> podcast, like a lot, a lot of crap. Like he's the most yeah. overrated. And I think he is good, but like he is like I think he's a top 25, 30 player in the league. I know it's hard to quantify like defensive yeah. players value, but I, I think he's that impactful. He puts up a double, double every night. Right. He's like top five in blocks, whatever. But like, yeah, his contract, it's kind of like Tobias Harris. Like oh. Tobias Harris has one Tobias of the worst Harris contracts is... in the league. And it's That's like, so bad. It, it feels bad. Like, I almost feel bad. Cause like he, he's not a bad player, but for what he's getting paid and what we're expecting out of him, He's he's not living up to that expectation, and that's kind of like oh, with no, Gobert. No. Like we just paid him too much. We overvalued him, and like Gobert yeah. got traded for what, like five first round picks or some shit. Like I mean, Gobert's trade ruined the whole trade market for like two seasons. <laughs> like, yeah, it was like literally, KD couldn't craziest. get out of Brooklyn, and then like you know, a couple. I forget who other players was, but the trade package was just insane. But somehow it worked for the Timberwolves because yeah, it ended up working now. Like, the first year that he came over there, though, it looked like it was one of the worst trades. Oh my god, ever. Like, and then. Yeah. I'm just surprised to see, honestly, that it panned out the way it did this year. But Danny, you know, I guess, yeah, a lot of things came together for for Minnesota, and you know, obviously they had Anthony a top Edwards. three seed. Yeah, Anthony Edwards is he's a dog. He's I'm a excited true. to see him in the playoffs again. Yeah, he's, but he's still fun to watch. Yeah, no, he really is. But yeah, Rudy Gobert. Um, uh, I'm not the type of guy to be like, oh, I don't want to give somebody the award because he already has this many. Like, if he's the best at it, then I'm going to vote for him. He's not the best. But that's the thing. I don't think he's the best. Like, I oh. just don't. And I feel like a lot of people around the league, a lot of players also would agree saying that he's not the best defender. Like, Anthony so many Davis, people. In my opinion, Anthony is a Davis. Rip protector okay. than, than Gobert. I mean, I watch. I mean, I watch. And versatility more wise, too. But every time Vers- I watch Lakers games, he's. He like even if he doesn't get the block, AD affects every single play. Like all the time. Think, yeah, he's he's having quietly like maybe the best season of his career this year. Um, I, I know he's been injured recently, especially in the beginning of the year. He was playing so well, but yeah, you can say he's he's been great. I mean, he's still in the prime of his of his career for sure. Yeah, now he's been great. You know, I I do wish that AD would just play at the level I know he could play at, like, yeah. more consistently. Because, you know, he's just certain nights where it's like, you know, what are you doing? Like, certain nights he's just kind of out there. He's yeah, not really so. AD. But, like, when he's locked in, AD is still easily a top 10 player when he's locked in. But that's the thing. It's just like, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what I'm going to get from him. Like, I think even right now he's not shooting that great. Is LeBron top 10? You know, um, I think, I think it's close. I think I think he still might be. Depends like who you're really trying to put over him. Because I don't know. Um, people obviously definitively over him. You got Jokic, Giannis, Luka, Embiid, yeah, um, Tatum. I say Tatum. But see, even with so this is my first name, right? When it comes to Tatum, I'm like, yeah. When I want when I go into a seven game series, do I really want Tatum over LeBron? And I know LeBron's 39, but like Tatum throughout the playoffs has kind of just been so hit or miss, and I don't know what I'm going to get from him. What do you and think I, about – okay, what about Devin Booker? It's another that's tough, tough one. Too. That's tough, too. Um, I don't know. I would say – I would for, for, as far as Tatum and Booker, right, I think production wise, they definitely do, do it more than LeBron, especially through the regular season, like production wise. And Tatum Booker, played. Booker was great in the playoffs last year too. And Tatum had, um, you know, he had a fifty ball against Sixers last year. Oh you my know? God, yeah. But he also had a really bad stretch there for for like the first round. He was like one of the worst shooting stretches 
He's um, definitely he's... not performed as well in the playoffs. As, yeah, he's – all he's done is win, so like people realize he's what twenty five years old. I think LeBron went on uh, his pod, him and JJ Reddick's podcast, and he was talking yeah. about how much shit that Tatum gets for no reason. I think it's because he's on the Celtics, and like everyone just like hates the Celtics. But yeah, and it's also all- that the team is just so good, man. It's like all it's tough. Win. And I hate to I hate to be that guy that's like knocking. So oh, like oh, he plays on a great team, so we gotta knock him. Like there's been a lot of great players who play on great teams, but it's the fact that he's had this talented of a roster and has continuously underperformed. Like that's this my thing. Year. This is the year for him to prove yeah. it. Like like LeBron didn't win his first title till what 27. Yeah. MJ didn't win his first till like around that same age. So it's like he's getting to that age now where it's like okay, like you. Right this is when you got to start winning and like if he doesn't win it like i've told my roommate there my co-host this like if they don't win this year like or at least get to the finals now i was gonna say what if they get to the finals and like lose in seven games to denver or something is that Uh, a huge knock on them no because denver is right because denver is still the next favorite like if they if they get bounced by like milwaukee or like new york and they don't even make the finals like Mm -hmm. you gotta fire missoula you gotta you gotta make some like something's got to happen like could that yeah. should not be like yeah it depends they, how they go out for sure they're definitely cho- i mean like that miami team last year was good don't get me wrong but they were an eight seed that went in and beat beat them you know yeah seven, in in boston they lost by 30 last year in boston like that that, that can't be happening <laughs> no nah, it definitely can't be happening yeah i mean and they, they were such a – and they're, they're a more talented team this year. I think Porzingis, I did not think he was going to fit that well on this team, but he has been great. Derek White has been – I don't know if you, like, watch Derek White. He's, like, one of the best defensive guards I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Um, he's solid. They're just, like, there's no weakness. They have a good bench. Peyton Pritchard is, in my opinion, like, the best backup point guard in the league. Um, he's he comes out there and he gets buckets on time. I was watching him like a couple weeks ago, and he's saucy, man. Like he he got the dribble package and everything. He would start on like probably like maybe not half the teams, but like he would start on like a bottom team in the league for sure. Yeah, he's probably like, good. 15, 20 a night. Yeah, he probably I mean, they good. Gave him contract for a reason. You don't usually see bench guys get uh oh. Talk about bench guys. Who's your who's your six man? Oh, that's a good question too. Like the you know, only, um, like still up in the air. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely up in the air. Yeah, I mean, Nas I've been Reed. seeing a lot of. Uh, you said Nas Reed. Nas Reed, I think he. Yeah, has to Nas get Reed. It. Nas Reed's a good pick. I've seen his name. I saw Malik Monk a lot. And Monk. who was the other name I'm thinking of that was up there? It's one was of the it? one of the three finals. I can't remember Austin who it was. Though. I don't think it was Reeves. Even. Because Reeves has kind of been in the starting line. I think he's been in the starting lineup too That's much this true. year to be to be considered. Maybe DiVincenzo. Yeah, it might have been him. NBA. But he's been starting too, like some games. So. Yeah, I want to see what the odds are. Because right, this is not telling me what it was. Let's see what they got it on here. Yeah, it says Malik Monk is one, then Nas Reed, then Bogdan Badanovich, Norman Powell, Bobby Portis, Karis Levert. Portis has been great. Yeah, those are the six people that are up in the running. Yeah, man, I feel like, wow, you can get Nas Reed for plus 150 on FanDuel. I, I feel like that's a good bet because Malik Monk's hurt. Yeah. And he's probably going to miss – the whole playoffs, which I know doesn't pay, you know, it doesn't really pay dividends in the, like, it's based on the regular season, but I do feel like, like, Nas Reed, man, he's been unbelievable, bro. He's, like, yeah. with Towns out, he was putting up, like, he was their second best player. He's been a huge reason, like, why yeah. they've been so successful this year, too. Like, Nas Reed has taken a huge step for, for Minnesota. He's, yeah, he's, he's been great over there. Yeah, I enjoy watching him. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, it's. I feel like it's between Monk and Reed. Monk being yeah. gone, Monk being gone is such a big um, loss for the Kings. I feel like without yeah, him, that's huge. 
they have no chance against the Warriors. Or even if they do beat the Warriors, they they don't have any chance of like actually like if they get in a series, like they're not they're gonna get destroyed. They're they're also missing Kevin Herter, who is a great shooter. And yeah. uh, that's like they're also one of those teams like similar to um similar to OKC. Their starting lineup's really good. But other than Malik Monk, their bench is like horrendous. Like, <laughs> yeah, for real. So I, yeah, I we'll don't... see what happens. I'm curious to see how this game goes against Golden State. I mean, I know that Steph lit them up last year in that game seven. Um, oh, yeah, that was crazy. What was that game six? What game was? I know. I remember the 50 ball he had. It was seven, actually. I think it was seven. But yeah, you know, vintage Steph Curry performance for sure. Um, so I'm curious to see how it goes in this play in. And then I remember last year Sabonis was horrendous against Golden State, and Draymond was sunning him the entire time. So yeah, I'm like curious Sabonis to see too. if he bounces back. Him and Kevon Looney were just manhandling Sabonis. I just I did not understand it. I was watching those games. I'm like, bro, he's, you he's look like a little kid out there. People, he's yeah. so strong. Yeah, I don't get it because like it looked like what he does to AD was happening to him. Like what he did to AD over the last couple of years, because he just gets his way with him. I mean, he's one of the strongest players in the league. Um, yeah. I feel like I watch him sometimes, and he's very passive. Like, like he won't shoot that much, and he won't try mm-hmm. to get his own shot. He's just, like, trying to pass every time, and he's a great passer. I mean, he averages almost, like, nine assists a game. Right. But he's got to be more aggressive. Like, he needs to be putting up, like, 25 a night. He only averaged 19 and a half points a game this year, which is, like, that's still good, but – it's a game like this is a scoring league. You gotta you gotta score. Like even Jokic, who like scoring is probably not Jokic's best attribute, but if he needs to put up forty, he will. You know? Yeah, that's my thing with Jokic. It's like he just chooses not to take that many shots. I feel like yeah. if he wanted to average he thirty, he to. could easily average thirty points. I mean, we've seen him oh doing the God. playoffs like year out and year. You know, when Jamal Murray doesn't year. play, he yeah, he's way more aggressive. Yeah, like we're talking about a guy who literally averages. He probably took like what, like 15, 16 shots this this year, and he still put up twenty. He's just so damn efficient, and he still averaged like almost twenty seven a game. The efficiency this year, but yeah, like, as far as the bonus though, I just feel like he doesn't have much of an offensive package to to get you know to score on that really. level. I mean, him even scoring twenty was kind of like a surprise to me because yeah, he can't really shoot threes. You know, he's just not the greatest of shooters in general. No, I mean, he also doesn't have the greatest touch around the basket, like. Jokic has a great touch around the oh, basket, touch. like great footwork. You know, yeah. very fundamentally sound. Like his, he got the best floater in the league. I don't care what anybody. His floater is automatic. Best floater in the league. I, yeah, I like John Morant. John Morant's floater is pretty nasty. Yeah, no, but it is. But John like Morant's just, hurt. yeah, like Jokic's floater game is. I mean, the dude. I feel like every time he puts up a floater, it goes in. Trying to think, who else has a good floater? Trey Young's up there too. Oh yeah, I mean mainly the the thing with the floater is it's usually like a point guard type of shot, yeah, yeah. like a you know, smaller a guard, floater. yeah, a smaller guard type of shot. But like when you look at the efficiency from Jokic, like yeah, he makes that at such an insane clip, like his his floaters. Yeah, he's no, right. uh, he's on another level. He but, doesn't miss, bro. No, nah, he, he shot. Uh, let's see, eighteen. He shot a lot more this year than he did last year. He shot eighteen shots a game. Eighteen. Last year, okay. He only shot fifteen. Yeah, last year he was Jamal Murray was hurt this year. Right. So he had to what do you uh what do you think about Michael Porter Jr.? I think he's severely overpaid right now. I hate <laughs> but, him. Uh, I feel that he has good numbers, but I just I don't like the way he plays basketball. It's kinda like Julius yeah, Randle. I hate the way Julius Randle plays basketball. Yeah, I'm not a big numbers, Julius Randle fan either. If you look at his numbers. Like, you're like, wow, like this guy almost averages like a 25 point triple double. But then you watch and you're like, what is he doing? Like, yeah, that's why the stats can be deceiving, you know? Cause like, oh, yeah. I, I'll have like debates with certain people. And the first thing they point out to me, oh, he, this guy's averaging five more points than him. I'm like, it's not all just about scoring. Like, I mean, when you're watching the game, you're seeing what they're doing. And then a lot of times, like, Impact. exactly, yeah, exactly. The thing with Julius Randle is he could put up these points in a regular season because he has, I mean, he literally is just out there to really score and everything. He's an ISO guy. Yeah, he's a very ISO heavy, like head down, tunnel vision type of guy. And that gets yep. exposed every time in the playoffs. That's why he's the biggest playoff dropper yep. I've ever seen. Like when you look at his numbers, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're, you know, there's Harden and whatever, but Tatum just, does that too a little bit. Like, Tatum does it too. But like his numbers, put his head man, down. 
he went from like 24 game the other year to like 15 in the playoffs or something like that. It's just a insane drop yeah. off. I mean, Embiid, Embiid's had some pretty shitty. Uh, yeah, Embiid pretty... too. Unfortunately, when he gets doubled, he's actually gotten a lot better. But earlier in his career, when he would get double teams, especially yeah, by he's... like better teams like the Celtics mm-hmm. when they had Marcus Smart. Right. My gosh. They just the crazy thing is, like, he's doing much better at it, but he still struggles with that. And he still sometimes you know, looks and, he, and that's the thing I'm saying. It's like, yeah. And that's the thing. He's gotten better, but he still struggles with that. Because it's like when you send – when basically when you make him have to, like, process really quickly and, like, make decisions really quickly. And so that's you're where sending, Jokic like, has the edge double – tri- Yeah, exactly. When you're sending, like, two, three people at him at a time from, like, different sides of the court, and it just makes it tough for him. And then also, I don't better, think that but... Doc Rivers did a good job last oh, year of really spreading out your guys' offense at all. So it was like a Bro. lot of times when he got doubled, he didn't even really have anywhere to kick it to like that. Yep. I think it's much better spacing yeah, no out with Nurse, though. Oh, yeah. Bro, the, my respect for you just went up a lot. <laughs> the fact, you just said that. Like, yeah. coaching plays such a big factor in the no, NBA. 100%. Pro- like, more than most sports. Um, it's so, like, strategic. I mean, every sport, right. whatever. But, like, yeah, Nick Nurse – I don't think the record showed this year how much of an impact he's made on this. Yeah, like, he I is mean it's because Joel and B missed so much time, but head they were, and shoulders. They would have been a top three seed easily. Yeah, I don't know if it's more that Rivers was just so bad, or Nick Nurse is just that much better because the it could team, be a little bit of both. I think Doc Rivers is like both. the most overrated coach of all time. I really don't get it. I don't even get how he got the job with, with Milwaukee that quickly. I just I mean, it doesn't they, make sense he didn't to me. do well with Milwaukee. They were like a 500 team with Yeah, no, was. they he hasn't. And then it's like and his especially supposed to be defense, they're still not great on defense. I know that they don't really have the greatest of defensive pieces, but I mean, you got mean, Giannis and, then and Brooke Mike Lopez. Thing, what else more do you need? Yeah, Brooke Lopez has been a little washed this year, though. I'm not going to lie. Malik Beasley but, is actually a really good defender, too. Yeah. But I feel that uh, the thing with Doc Rivers is just that, you know, his in-game adjustments are terrible. He doesn't terrible. ever do anything. He's just terrible. like, okay, yeah, what's happening? And then when he gets in the huddle, like, we have literally have heard inside the huddle, he's like, players, what are we going to do? Like what are we doing? Yeah. Like, he's just he's not writing anything down on the clipboard. No. He's got nothing. No, and yeah, he's terrible. and then post game he wants to go up to the mic and start blaming the players or start making excuses. I've never seen a coach do that. Like, and he has done that consistently throughout every team he's been through. He did that like, with Simmons, to me, right? He did it with Paul George. He did it with Simmons. He did it with um, who else did he do it with? Oh, he was like talking about how trash his team was back when he used to coach like Orlando and stuff. Oh, he's, he's got just, so he's... many opportunities with such great rosters with those Clippers oh, yeah. teams. Like, the fact that they never won a title. They didn't even make it past the second round. I mean, nope. that, even even when he Which did Which is win, crazy. It's crazy to think about that, bro. It really is. Blake like a, he had a team, today. Right. He had Prime Blake with Prime CP3, like DeAndre Jordan, Jamal Crawford, Lou Williams. Reddick. Like, this team was stacked, man. And you blew a 3-1 lead to the Rockets when Harden was on a bench. Yeah. Like, I know for that for that uh, game five that they're in. And it was just ridiculous to watch. And then you go on, just no adjustments. The Atlanta series you know? with, the, with Philly when we were up. Oh, that was horrendous. I mean, horrendous, we lost, the fact, the that, fact that, that we that. lost to that team, that Atlanta team had no business being right. in the Eastern Conference Finals. Nope. And, nope. like, I, I know you can't put all the – you can't put all the blame on a coach or a player, but, like, yeah, the, the common theme with uh, – with Doc Rivers is just underperformance, you know? Like yeah, not it's, it's always been that way. Yeah. Yeah. When when the Bucks hired him, I was like, I was happy. I was I, like, yeah, what, yeah when they hey, hired him, my first thing was like, yeah, they're not going to the finals. I said they're done. They're I was no like, way. good. I, I don't know why they fired Budenholzer. I thought that was like the most impulsive. Yeah, it might have been a little prematurely. I, I know that though. It was like the last couple of years, the Budenholzer had been a little suspect, like, because the way they went out against Boston, um, I know they went to seven games, but that game seven, man, they were so bad. And then you could see that it was basically live or die by the three for them. Like if Giannis, it was basically Giannis and everyone else shot like 10% from three or something like that. I was watching yeah. that game. And then the next, obviously they lose last year, but, but like, Giannis did Miami, miss two games. Yeah, but yeah. Miami ended up going to the finals. So it was like right, they lost the- to Miami. And at the time it seemed like, it oh my God, bad. they just lost to the AC. But also it was like, Bro, they weren't playing like AC. You had Jimmy Butler, who just dropped a 55-point game. Giannis was hurt, too. 
Giannis got hurt the first two games. And then also the, their whole bench just started raining threes. Like Caleb Martin turned into an all-star. Yeah. You had, <laughs> yeah, like, a, and then obviously it, you had Babe, yeah, yeah, all of them were just balling. And then between yeah. Jimmy playing phenomenal, like Jimmy was cooking Drew. Like, oh. you got the best perimeter defender and he's getting cooked. What are you going to do? Out of body was playing well. Yeah, Duncan like, Robinson. you can't really. There's only so much you can blame Budenholzer for that. No, on that. I can't. You I know? mean, like, you guys, you lost. They lost to the better team, honestly. Like, that's, yeah, that's a huge problem with the NBA, honestly. I feel like teams give up on coaches so quickly, like, when they yeah. have an actual good coach. Like, I mean, you guys had won a championship in 2021. It's yeah, only three it years later. It's only three years later. And I mean, and you're trying you to know, build something, you know. It's like if you want guys yeah. to stay, I don't know. I feel like from just from like a personal standpoint, like you want to build relationships and like yeah, build a core and uh, have that familiarity. And like if you have a new guy in there every year or two, like how does that look for like free agents? How does that look for like the team itself? Like right. I don't know. Unless there there had to have been something going on like internally that like we didn't. Know I was about. just about like, to say that. Yeah, Probably. because I was saying that like, that happened with uh, Adrian Griffin. That apparently, like Giannis, Adrian Griffin, like Damian Lillard. I don't know. Apparently, they all didn't really like him that much. The coach yeah. Griffin, he wasn't at least. But he, yeah, like, for your first job to be coming in with a team like that, like that's tough. Like yeah, but my thing is, it's like damn, you fired a. Co- they were thirty four and thirteen when he got fired, and then like bald. you bring it. Yeah. yeah, then like the the Mavs are playing. Good. I mean, not the Mavs. The the Bucks are playing really good, and you know Doc comes <laughs> in, comes. and that's it. That's yeah. it. The, the Bucks actually fall comedic. apart. It's crazy. It really is. It's it is it's it's honestly super comedic because everything that everyone thought was gonna happen happened. Like <laughs> the Doc's yeah. gonna come on, the Bucks are gonna be trash now, and that's exactly what happened. If this is not his last coaching job, he's got to have some like some dirt on the NBA. Like the only I don't good thing, how he keeps getting yeah, jobs. I don't know how he does either. The only good thing about him getting the coaching job is I don't gotta listen to him on. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Same page. That was my next thing I was about to say. Like, yeah, because hearing him talk him. is horrible. Oh, he's so – Yeah, he's, his he voice wasn't is a good horrible. commentator. Like, yeah. No, I'd rather bad. listen to anyone else. I'd rather listen to Van Gundy over him. Yeah. So annoying. There's a lot of people I'd rather listen to. But it's just because, man. His, and then and then not only that, you hear his voice. Plus, they had Doris Burke right next to him. Like, that's two yeah. horrible voices yeah. that you just got to there listening to the whole game. I'm not trying to hear the whole game. No. Like, that honestly. Was, uh, and yeah, that was bad. So I'm, I'm glad, glad but I'm sure he might end up going back there again, unfortunately. Like if he's out of Milwaukee next year. Cause I don't know. He was basically setting himself up for failure as soon as he got on Milwaukee. He's like, Yeah, I wouldn't wish this on anybody joining a team mid season. It's like, man, you got an excuse for everything. I just don't get it. He's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he is. Like the fact that he even made the NBA's all time, like what it was like the top 15 coaches of all time, the NBA, like <laughs> actually put he that out that? there like when the nba did their top 75 list a few years ago like i did not know that they did a um top 15 coaches of all time he's on there wow. and i just think that That's is he's on there for name, what one championship i could name 10 coaches that you right got with a super team <laughs> yeah literally it's like you know i understand he's got a lot of wins all the time under his belt and everything because he's coached for a long time but like long, yeah exactly and there's just been no other success though when's the last time he's even been to a conference finals he hasn't been since um when was it? With the uh with Boston. With Boston, that really might be the last time he went to the conference finals in twenty ten. Yeah. When they played yeah. uh Yeah, when they played uh Miami. Like yeah. tw- it was either twenty ten or twenty eleven, whatever that was. And that team that's actually insane. That team was stacked. Like yeah, anyone could, like, like me and you could have brought that team to the, the conference yeah. finals. But like, how? T- when well, you put it in those terms, like it really just makes it think. Like, how did he? How does he continue to get coaching jobs? And he has not even sniffed the conference finals in well over a decade. Him, I think with him, like what yeah, people reason, think yeah. is he's like this bigger guy. He's played in the league. He's been on. He's he's coached a lot of superstars. Yeah. So I think like organizations think that he's good at dealing with like superstars right. but he but he's not like his record no. shows that and i just don't understand i think people are kind of just like banking on his experience to help but right. i just i don't think he's a good basketball mind like i was ready for like i think jj reddick should become a coach 
I yeah, I was excited to see. I thought he was going to do that, but honestly, I don't blame him though because I mean, he's making a ton of money off these podcasts, oh, yeah. and he's it's also a lot less stress. stressful of a job. Like, yeah, wow. like so, I don't blame him. Yeah, he's but, he's great. His podcast yeah. is great. He's on. I ESPN. really like his podcast. Uh, LeBron's down. Uh, uh-uh. but it's not. I don't think oh. he's actually hurt. Hurt. Uh-uh. Zion just ran into him. I think he's. See, I used to be LeBron on the other end. <laughs> Now he's wow. on the receive again. Oh, Zion really I mean Zion's he's a, a freaking Zion is dude. legit three hundred pounds. Yeah. Zion's a humongous <sighs> person. He'll be all right. It's just a that was just like a Honestly, body body. yeah, I think I think he might have got checked. Uh looked like he was holding his elbow. Must have just his feet were kind of moving too, but they called offensive good. Oh, yeah. I know he was fine though. LeBron's always super dramatic when he does that shit. Unfortunately. <laughs> That is but definitely LeBron. He's uh, always got to sell know. that call. Got to sell Lions. that call. Oh, nah, you're he, fine, bro. He got it, though. No, he's good. I think I'm yeah. like 10 seconds behind you, unfortunately. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm uh, 10 minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah, I'm like probably exactly 10. Yeah, the Lakers started off slow, but they've been looking good ever since the second quarter. Honestly, I feel like – um, I feel like I the mean, only you're person lineup, bro. Like that, like you guys are, like the fact that you guys are. If you look at that starting lineup and you're like, oh, they're the nine seed, like yeah, what the hell, bro. Like it's also because the freaking West is just so stacked. Like, hold on, what was um, what was our final record here? The, I think the you were Lakers like, had forty seven wins, ten games over, which is good for the fifth seed in the East. So it's just it's just so stacked, man. Like, forty seven wins and they're the A seed. So that's tough. Like when, especially when you look over on the Eastern Conference, and the the difference between the first and second seed is fourteen games, and then everybody else is just super close. So, yeah, you know that's it's a tough break for them. But I think your bench is a little is a little uh, weak. You have some names. It's a little weak. But- but like, I actually like Torian Prince. I think he's solid, um, and I like Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie can get his own shot. Jackson right. Hayes, in my opinion, isn't very good. Um, and yeah, he's like not Max, all about Max Christie. I know he plays it like sometimes, but yeah, he's I, like I, a little. He's you know he gives a little energy all the bench. What's up with Christian but, Wood? Yeah, I feel like he's just not really in the rotation anymore. <laughs> yeah, honestly, just, like, he's just he, kind of fell he, off though. He used to be like really good. Yeah, I don't know. He was like he, a 2010 he, guy for like a couple years. Right, he was. Yeah, he was on the come up, and then yeah, he just fell off. I don't know what happened with him, but he barely gets any clock anymore. Um, yeah, and then like, um, but yeah, I like Tori and Prince too. Uh, I like when he comes off the bench because Darvin yeah. Hand had him in the starting lineup for yeah. like way too long, and that's when yeah. the Lakers are just horrible. Like right now, the five they got in right now has been easily the best five we've had all season. Like yeah. especially when as soon as we said D'Lo, hey, you might get traded, he was like, no, I'm not. Yeah. He started balling. Yeah, balling. He started like, putting up like like thirty a night. Yeah, like, he was hooping. Oh, what was that? Yeah, man. And then all the game. Yeah, it has been. I mean, you know, playoff time. It's gonna be. Yeah, like bro. That. I can't it's, believe it. It's. I know. I feel like this year just flew by. This whole season. This is gonna be a good. I mean, I say this every year, but this is gonna be a good, good playoffs. Yeah, for sure. So it's so unpredictable in the West. I know it really could be anybody. I mean, even though I do feel it's still going to be Denver, but it really could be anybody though. Because like Denver isn't unbeatable. I just don't know if anyone else has really stepped up to their level just yet. There's a lot of young teams still, like that got to get some more experience. The but- X fact, in my opinion, the, the the reason why Denver's so good, if you watch them, they do like the same thing almost every time. Yeah. It's- it's the uh, pick and roll, like, uh, and then the, the like, what the hell? Did a little it? dribble handoff. Dribble handoff, that's what it's called. Yeah, they yeah. did a little dribble, dribble handoff, handoff at the top of the key. Yeah. And then if you a lot of motion. It's so much motion, but then if it doesn't, yeah. if that doesn't work, then Aaron Gordon just cuts from the baseline and does a backdoor cut, and then Jokic right. just. It, but it works yeah. like every time. It works like, every time. You're gonna double Jokic. Or Murray's going to be open from the pick because Jokic is so big. 
And then right. he's either going to hit it back. You know, it's just like – They're so fun to watch, man. I love to watch them. I really do. Like some people say it it's just boring like, and everything, but it's just so fun oh, to watch them. It's such good basketball. It's kind of it like – it's very like, you know, prime Golden Spurs. State, like, yeah, yeah, Golden State too, or like how the Spurs used to move the ball back with like, you know, yeah. uh, Manu, Tony, Tim Duncan, all of them. So it's I because I so I'm a really big fan of just team basketball and ball movement. Same. So Same. it's it's great to see that like unfold because that's always gonna win at the end of the day. That's always gonna be isolation basketball. And it's it always has every time. So you know, it's fun to watch them. And that's why they're just so hard to defend. Yeah. And they have such a well, like, constructed roster. Like, yeah. Aaron Gordon so perfectly fits that team. Like, he does, especially like when people thought he kind of wasn't ever really going to pan out. You know? Yeah. Like, Porter is the three point shooter. They'll sometimes, Jamal Murray is the shot creator. Aaron Gordon's like the slasher, dunker, finisher. KCP is the three and D guy. Yo, like they all know their role. They're all, yeah, and they have a good bench. Honestly, like I know they lost Bruce Brown, but Christian Braun's a good player. Peyton Watson's right. a good player. Um, who else do they have? Reggie Jackson is actually, in my opinion, Reggie Jackson's still cool too. a good player. Like yeah, they still sure. still have some like solid pieces on the bench. Mike Malone is a top three coach in the league. Yeah. And, like they're just they don't really have any weaknesses. The only team that like like I said, like if Luca just goes crazy, but my thing with Dallas is like I don't know Kyrie in my opinion, like I know he's had a pretty good year. I I just I don't trust him in like a seven game series. No, I feel that. And you know, a lot of people might try to jump on you real quick for saying something like that but i mean when we look at even since basically since he's left cleveland yeah like it's it's been the it's just been the story like he's either hurt or he hasn't really played up to par off the court he's like he's played yeah and i mean like boston when he actually was there for the playoffs he had one of his worst shooting series you yeah. know and then um he was playing really well against milwaukee and brooklyn the first year or the second year after they missed the, playoffs oh, first year, yeah. the second year and then he got hurt again and then the next year, when they played Boston, he shot, again, one of the worst of his career. He had a great game one. After that, terrible. Same thing with KD. Horrible. He had, like, one good game. And then basically, what, after that, now he's in uh, Dallas. You know, they didn't make the playoffs last year, so we'll see what happens this year. Although Kyrie's been having probably his best year. This might be his best career statistically ever. Really? Like, for his For his career. I think he's averaging, like, 25, 5, and 6, almost on 50, 40, 90. Like, he's having a phenomenal season. Even though, again, he has missed a, quite a bit of time. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, he's missed quite a bit of time. But just him on the court, like him and Luca, is such a good pairing, which a lot of people oh, may yeah. not have thought it was. But the way that they play together is, they I think they just, each other I think, too. yeah, they exactly. Both. They do a lot. And they, they love each other, man. They have such a good bond already, like just seeing it on the court. So it's, it's really good. I think that, um, I think Dallas is definitely like a, a dark horse almost. Yeah. And, you know, they're – hopefully they beat they beat the Clippers this year. I think they definitely do. I think do they remember, beat them this time. Uh, do you remember when they played – the Clippers played Dallas in the bubble? Um. Yeah. Do you remember that series? Yeah, and when like, like, Dallas like, came back. They were, like, they were like beating Luka up that whole series. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And like they, I, I think it was Montrez Harrell said that thing about Luca. Yeah, like he said, bitch ass white boy. <laughs> yeah, something like yeah, yeah something, something on like those that. lines. So I feel like Luca's got and like there's, I know it's that was a long time ago, but I think the Clippers but, did end up winning that series, but it was like seven games. They like, did, yeah. The Clippers were like heavy, heavy favorites in that series. Yeah. Um, I feel like Luca. Luca's the kind of a guy that like doesn't forget that kind of stuff, you know? No, nah, definitely not. And, I mean, it's shown because every single time after that, he's obliterated the Clippers. Like, yeah, I want to say that he averages at least 35 a game against the Clippers. He hates the Clippers, bro, because he has that extra – like, it's like you you don't want to poke the bear. You're poking the bear with the Clippers with him. And uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, he averages 33 points per game against the Clippers. Career scoring, and it's that's kind of like him against the Suns too. You know, like him and him oh and yeah, have that, have that rivalry and like. I hope I hope we get to see that again. I hope that they beat 
the Clippers and then somehow match up against the Suns, but I don't think Phoenix is going to beat uh, the Timberwolves, even though even though the, the Suns are favorited somehow. Uh, but yeah, I, I think yeah. I think yeah, of course they're favorite. I think Minnesota definitely handles them though. I'm gonna to be completely I'm gonna take honest. Minnesota in that series too. I mean, yeah. I think I think Phoenix is actually playing decent basketball. One thing uh, I've been given like I've been giving Bradley Beal like so much slander all year, like <laughs> so yeah. much slander. But I was looking at his numbers uh, the other day, and he's actually he's like having like a 50, 40, 90 year. And yeah. I think people expected him a lot more out of him. I don't know. Like, this kind of contradicts what I'm saying. But, like, I've watched some of their games, and he just looks, like, lost sometimes. Right. Uh-huh. And I think also the fact that Grayson Allen has had, like, an arguably better year than him when he's making, like, a fifth yeah, of the great. money. What a but surprise. Bradley Beal has, has – uh, if you've looked at his stats the last couple uh, weeks – He's starting to play better, and if he can play better, they're a different team. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. My biggest thing with Phoenix is obviously their defense, um, and that they don't yeah. really and have the greatest of defenders. Yeah, exactly. They have the worst plus moments. minus in the fourth quarter in the NBA, which is so crazy to think about, considering that they have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal, like just three go-to scorers. Just so that's that. definitely a surprise. Bad coaching. I don't know what yeah. you blame that on. Is Frank Vogel their coach? Uh, yeah, I think Vogel's a coach now. Yeah, he's been after the uh, they he's fired kind of like a Doc Rivers players. guy. Like he just gets jobs. Yeah, he's another one that gets jobs. I mean, he is usually supposed to be good defensively, but I he had those just, good the Phoenix Indian. doesn't really. Yeah, he has some good Indian teams, and then I mean, obviously they won in the bubble. Like he was the coach twenty twenty for the Lakers. Yeah, true. Yeah. So he's got that. That Lakers, Lakers team was away. stacked, though. Yeah, Lakers yeah, are pulling away. They've been playing. The Lakers have been on fire after that first quarter because they came out so slow, but they look great now. Lakers, Denver, man. Oh, I hope that they. I hope it's a better series, more competitive. Well, the thing is, too, the game's the, not over. But last year, yeah, it's not over yet. But last year, the uh, the games were actually pretty close against Denver. Wait, weren't y'all down by part. ten at halftime? Um. No, I think we were up by 10. You guys were up by 10. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah, I think it was 60 to 50. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. I was like, wow, that was a crazy comeback. Yeah, no, we were down like early in the first. He well, definitely traveled. Of course, right I there. bet on New Orleans, so <laughs> that's not good. Oh, really? Damn. I yeah, I put a, I put a, up a poll on my wow, you guys are my cute. Instagram, and I was actually surprised with how many people were going for New Orleans this game. I really thought the NBA wanted uh, – I I, don't, I think I was overthinking it because I do think like you guys are the better team, but I just didn't yeah. think you guys would win. Oh, yeah, really I think that play, uh, I I want to see is uh, you know I feel like no one else is really showing up with Zion here. I mean Zion, then again, though he's only scored two points this quarter. He had twenty in the first half, so he's definitely been struggling a little bit more. Um, Herb there. Jones is the next leading scorer. Like, what does Brandon Ingram even have right now? He's he's. I I don't think he's back to like his himself yet. I thought yeah, CJ McCollum like, which is, was gonna have a better night. Yeah, CJ McCollum too. I he's been quiet. The I, whole time. I expected a bigger game from him. I don't I don't get it. Yeah, because like Brandon Ingram's, he got eleven points, four of eleven shooting. That's not terrible. Zion's got twenty two and ten of sixteen. They're not playing defense. Board. And then Jonas Valanciunas is one of six. CJ McCollum two and nine. So it is not really, and he's one of six from three. So they're not. They're just not showing up right now. I mean, Lakers are shooting fifty percent from three right now. It's tough to beat. Yeah, a team Lakers have been. Yeah, well. they've been on fire there. And it's no one's even having a ridiculous game like AD. Very balanced. Only has six points right now. He's two of eight. And LeBron seventeen points on four and nine. You know, um, D'Lo's having a good game. D- D'Lo, he leading the team. Well, actually, AD or no, LeBron's got the leading points for the Lakers, but Gabe he got Reeves it. and Danzo oh. Russell with 12, 15 points. So, yeah, I feel like Williamson's been carrying the Pelicans right now. He's got 24 right now. 
Did you see the game the other night where uh, Milwaukee played Boston and Milwaukee took two free throws and Boston didn't take a free throw the entire game? What game was this? It was, uh, I think it was Milwaukee versus Boston. Um, it was one of the last games of the year. It was uh, Milwaukee actually beat Boston. I'll show it to uh-huh. you. Pull it up. Um, you said Milwaukee didn't have a free throw? It was like. Or Boston did Boston didn't shoot a free throw the entire game. I feel like I heard something about and that. Milwaukee only shot, like, where is this game at? I don't know where to find it. Let me, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I did hear something like on Instagram, like the NBA has told the refs to like stop calling so many fouls because <laughs> I do feel like they've from watching games they've they've been letting them play more, which I really I really like that honestly. Yeah, I mean sometimes like you got to call a foul, but like. No, sometimes yeah, you gotta call it foul, but I like right. when they just play. Like, but there are guys I like the that way that it's officiated in the it. playoffs. Yeah, especially in today's NBA, like you know. Yeah, Celtics. Yeah, so it was, it was uh, Celtics versus Milwaukee. This was um, what day was this? It was April 9th, so a week ago today. Yeah. Boston shot. Zero free throws the entire game. I think it was a record. Like, and uh, Giannis had two free throws, and that were the only free throws Milwaukee took the entire game. Yeah, that that's that's. I was like, sketchy. what is happening? Like, there there had to be some sort of initiative before the game. Like, we are having yeah. the quickest game of all time. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Honestly, I don't I don't get what's up with that. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, bad. I like, you think the uh, NBA is like, um, you know, a lot of people say the script and shit, or like it's uh, rigged yeah. and all this and that. I feel that. Uh, I there's think there's been definitely moments. stuff that happens, like especially now with gambling. Like, yeah, the amount of money that is gambled every day, like there's definitely stuff going on. But oh, hundred percent. I don't. And I think even before like gaming became really prominent, I think that's only just raised it. I mean, I I don't think it's like scripted. Like how some people go, oh yeah, they got a script every season. Like no, I feel like it just goes kind of like on a. So if it gets to the playoffs, it's kind of more so like a series to series basis kind of thing. Because my thing was, if they really thought or like if the NBA was really scripted, do you think that they wanted the Heat versus Denver last year? Like that yeah. was not the finals that they wanted at all. Yeah. And you know, it's this A seed that was just garbage the whole year that ends up going like people love a Cinderella story. Yeah. But what was gonna make the most money was especially with the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Like if they really wanted to, they could have just started calling some BS at the end of the games. Boston to get... would have been a lot better too for a viewer. Yeah, like imagine a Boston Lakers finals, like yeah. or something like you know, like that would have just brought in Boston so Denver, much more yeah. revenue. Yeah, yeah. like it's just the no, rivalry right. between those point. two. Like, they're two, some of the biggest markets. So, I'm just like, yeah, man, there's there's no way it's, like, actually scripted. But there's definitely things that are skewed, you know, like. There's definitely been moments. Like, there's been calls. And, I mean, obviously, you know, there's been the um, – some of the refs that have come out and said that they they did things like Donahue and, and all of them. Or, like, well, recently someone came out saying that they were padding stats for, like, John Stockton and, and those guys back in the 90s. I he, he went on somebody's podcast. Yeah, he went on somebody's podcast, and they were saying that, like, yeah, like, we were counting assists that weren't really assists, basically. Like, you know, he passed the ball. The guy would do, like, a bunch of dribbles and then a move, and they would still give him an assist, even though it wasn't yeah. technically one. That's uh... But, yeah, he was exposing a lot of stuff on that as well. You know, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it is entertainment. Like, it's a business, and they make a lot of money. So it is. they want to put out the best product but it's definitely not scripted like they're not going out there <laughs> at the beginning of uh, the I season like all right <laughs> nah honestly that would be the only thing that would ever make me stop watching the nba probably yeah i know a lot of people have said about the nfl with like pat mahomes and like the whole yeah, like, that, taylor swift thing oh my god here. that that whole ravens game though man i was uh, at that game and I, yeah do you live you live you live in that the still the maryland area yeah yeah okay. i'm in yeah. uh I'm right, not right outside Baltimore, but I'm in Harford County. So, yeah, sure. I'm uh, yeah. 
I'm in the city, and uh, that game, man, like you're in Baltimore. Ravens, yeah, I'm in Baltimore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, ever honestly, since college, I've been here. But um, nice. They uh, they were the better team. They should have won that game. Not to not to change the yeah. topic to be an NBA or an NFL talk, but no, that's all good. Oh, tough. No, but yeah, that was hard to watch though. Um, that was. They didn't run the know. ball. Like, nah, yeah, that was, that was the sketchiest thing to me. It wasn't even all the missed calls and the missed PIs. It's the fact that the Ravens had ran all season, like the best rushing season. attack all season. We come into the they AFC Championship game, game, run six times? What the hell are we doing? They tried making <laughs> Lamar like this player that he wasn't, like. Right. And, like, kudos to, like, the Chiefs. Like, they played great defense, but, like. Yeah, the Chiefs had an amazing defense. That's fumble, last year, but bro. What's his name? Uh, bro, Zay, Zay Flowers fumbled, fumbled that fumbled. right at the goal oh, line. That God. I knew it was wraps after that. As soon as that happened, I sat back down on my chair because, like, the stadium went flat because, like, I was there. And when when that happened, like, forget it about just, it. It was The, it was the whole hurt. soul was sucked out of every Ravens That was, like, your there. one good drive. Like, the yeah, whole. Yeah, that was terrible. Are you a, um, your Eagles fan too, then? Because you say you're a 76 fan. I'm an Eagles fan, yeah. Bro. Yeah, the, bro, I don't know what happened to your team that, that second bro, half of the year. That was one of the craziest. Oh, like, that was ridiculous. You went from 11 and 0 to 11 and 7. I it was just, crazy. Yeah, that was we, uh, I saw when we were we were favorited in that game against Tampa. I put like my entire account on Tampa money line, and I won so much money because I was like, we suck. You just knew like, we're lose. actually so yeah. bad. <laughs> like we're not winning anything, and uh, yeah. that ended up we we ended up losing by like fifteen points. Like we got killed. Yeah, no, nah, it was bad. I remember Something watching happened. that. It was like our whole the whole team's morale was just gone. Right. Like no, it was, yeah, I don't know. That was bad. It was it was weird. I was surprised. That was honestly. very weird. Okay, Alvarado. There we go. Yeah, he rolled his ankle right there. Uh, did he just get hurt. Yeah, he he ran it off. That he kept running, but he's holding hey, he's his an ankle. He's probably gonna get anyone. he's probably gonna get subbed out. Anyone can make the league, man. <laughs> yeah, that, as long not, as he, not anyone, but you know what I mean. Not like, anyone, you know, but yeah. Guys like him, like for me, I love I That's love the underdog him. stories. TJ McConnell. Oh my gosh. Right, TJ McConnell. Him. The fact that LeBron shouted him out on his podcast. Did you hear that? Did he really? <laughs> He's like, yeah, his latest podcast episode. I don't know if you watched any of them yet, but they were talking about just like some of their favorite players in the league. Like, and I guess like more low key kind of guys. Yeah, he started, he brought up he's like TJ McConnell. He's like I love his game. Like he's so smart. Like he just start like really hyping up TJ McConnell. He's a great player, bro. And right, and it's not, funny because like people that don't really watch hoops like that, you say TJ McConnell. Oh, that dude's a bum. What? Like who is no, that? Like it's trash. Bro. But it's like no, nah, like so he's weird. even when he was in Philly, like because I I would watch a lot of the Sixers game too. Like it's not my yeah. team, but like my one of my closest friends is a, is a Philly fan too. Uh-huh. So I would watch a lot of Sixers game. And he was a bucket back then too for Philly. Like he was so good. He has that pull up little like twelve foot yeah. mid range from like yeah. that. He just like he's just a smart player, miss. and he's a great defender. He picks up every other team's point guard full court right. the entire game. Doesn't yeah. get tired. He's the great type of passer. player that just yeah. He's the type of player just does, he does not get enough appreciation as far as like that because you know there's guys like a Jose Alvarado, like a TJ McConnell. You know, even like a Drew Holiday, you know, because like some people will question why. Derek White. Derek White. Derek White. Like a lot of these. Get, yeah, Derek White for sure. You know, or um, does the a lot of these. Yeah, a lot of these players just never get the recognition that they should. But they do the things on the court that needs to be done in order to win basketball games that your star players aren't necessarily always going to do. A lot of teams like, yeah, like. Good bucket, I'm, really. It's tough. I, uh. Yeah, Rui, Rui has a really good mid range, but yeah, that, was, that was a. a I love Rui's game. game. Yeah, he's good. Another guy that uh, like another sixer, but Paul Reed is another guy that gets no appreciation. Familiar with his game, but it's like these guys like that weren't supposed to make the league that are in the league that play like it's their last game every game. You know, it's right? Like they. They know that it's just a blessing that they're even on the court. It's like Derek right. White was like a D3 player, like didn't even have like any offers undrafted, like guys like that, like Paul Reed undrafted or no, he was second round, but like mm-hmm. TJ McConnell under like those guys like that, they play different. Like, yeah, because they're not the most talented guys, but they just like, 
out hustle you, out work you. Like Haywood Highsmith right. on on Miami. Yeah, is a, Haywood Highsmith. Like he's not even like good. a Hami Hawkes too went under the radar this yeah. year as a rookie, and Hami Hawkes is really good for Miami. Like he was a great player there. And Highsmith's from Baltimore too, which is cool. Right. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of good players like that, and you know they don't really get They're a lot important. of love. No, hundred percent. Kyle like, Lowry. Even um, Kyle Lowry. Like even a um. Who we talked about earlier? I feel like uh, like a Nas Reed. You brought up Nas Reed six man. Yeah. I mean, I guess he's kind of getting a little bit more recognition now. Yeah. Like you know. I wanted yeah, this game to be of... closer. What do you uh, What do you I think know. about this uh, this game coming up? You know, I think it's gonna definitely be a good one. I'm kind of sad that I probably won't be able to watch it because I got I got work in the morning, like super yeah. early. Probably gonna say that I'm not gonna watch it, but then I'm gonna end up watching way more than I want to yeah. watch. I would love to watch it, but I'm gonna have to just see what happens in the morning. But I do think that oh, it's tough. I mean, you obviously you already mentioned how the Kings are missing some key pieces, so I think I'll go with Golden State in this. Yeah, but you know, um, yeah, I'm gonna take Golden State on that one. I think I think they're like slight favorites. Elo. Oh, oh my God! Wow, they're kind of cutting into this lead. Trey Murphy's a sniper. Yeah, he is. That's another guy that goes underappreciated, Trey Ooh. Murphy. But yeah, that's going, it's going uh cutting into that lead a little bit. I don't like this. It's a low scoring game, honestly. Very. I like that more though, when it's just a lot, you know, more intense on the defensive end for both teams and they're actually playing real time like yeah. defense. They're playing Nobody's real like, defense. Yeah. It's just way more intense. That's that's what the playoff atmosphere brings. I wish we I wish we saw more of it in the regular season, but I don't know. It's just not like that anymore. No, it's but, not. These guys are yeah, the Pelicans on an eighteen and eight run in the last five and a half minutes. I'm gonna watch the end of this third quarter. You probably already saw it. What happens? Yeah, it's only two seconds left, so I didn't see exactly what happened yet. Okay. Bringing in Jackson Hayes. Yeah, he just got subbed in. Zion inbounding. That's weird. Huh. I thought they'd maybe do a lob threat to Zion. Yeah, it's his Zion, right. CJ McCollum, three. I'm calling it. <laughs> wow, and they fouled him? Nah, come on, man. No way they let that happen. Oh, good hustle no by Zion. Way. Damn, man. That's trash. Let's see if he makes these free throws, though. Sheesh, man. Oh. Yep. My, my Wi Fi went out. Oh yeah, no, no worries. I don't know if you heard me, but I said I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna bounce after this, uh, these free throws. I gotta. Yeah, no, that's gotta, actually perfect because I was gonna say that. Yeah, I was gonna say I gotta start uh probably getting ready to take it off of here myself as well. Let's see if he knocks these free throws down real quick though. Oh, he's challenging. You having me on, though, man. Oh yeah, for sure. Now I'm trying to make this more like, you know, of a routine kind of thing, especially yeah. like some of these playoff games. Um, tomorrow definitely planning on doing this again. And my, uh, you know, my normal co-host, uh, my cousin, is gonna be okay, on. Cool. He's, a, he's a Heat fan, so definitely hop on. I'll oh, see if okay. I can. Okay, I'll see if I can hop on. If I can't hop on, because I'm definitely gonna be tuned into that game. But I might right. be going out somewhere to watch it. If I'm, but if I'm not out, I'll, I'll hop on and I'll try to get my. Uh, yeah, that's on. cool. Just, just let me are know. You still, you know. Are you guys still recording pods too, or are you just doing this? Yeah, yeah. No, we're still gonna record pods. It's been, uh, okay. I haven't really been able to set what note recently, unfortunately. But no, we're, yeah, we're still trying to record some pods too. But maybe this Sunday, I have to see. We're we're doing one. Um, for the playoffs, once the play-in is over and they have it all okay. set, so I mean, you can you're more than welcome to hop on one or whatever way you know we yeah, can figure. Yeah, I'm it definitely out. I'm definitely down if you guys, you know, want to have uh have me up on there. 
probably do like sure. a whole a whole predictions thing. Yeah, no, that'll be dope. No, I'm definitely down. And yeah, we'll make something happen over here too. Cool. But yeah, so all right, that's gonna be it though. Appreciate everybody in here who's still watching. Still got four of y'all. I think we were up to almost 20 at one point, so that was pretty cool. Appreciate oh, cool. y'all. Yeah, so not too bad, not too bad. But you know, everybody can go finish off the fourth quarter on their own. Uh, we're going to be done here for tonight. But, again, appreciate you coming on, bro. So I'll see you next time. All right, man. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.